Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for joining me here on Huddle Swishes Coaches Clinic. I'm so honored to be here and cannot thank the Huddle staffers enough, um, especially our local representative here in Massachusetts, Brendan Hall, uh, for, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I think having my name even on the same list as Don Staley and Courtney Banghart and all the other uh, coaches on here, even if it's way down the line, um, is still maybe the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, so I am so happy to be here sharing that cool, cool moment with, with all of you guys. Um, and thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you're anything like me, you probably have a million things going on in your head. Um, you have gotten information about basketball from everything from podcasts to articles videos, DVDs, whatever you're watching, uh, your, your circle of close coaching peers, and I'm sure that cir circle continues to expand from year to year, and there's just an overload of a ton of information, and I'm just going to add to all of that, um, but hopefully there are some things that, that you can take from today's presentation, just little tidbits here and there. I feel like no matter what I've ever done in the past, um, whether it's you know just coaches clinics in person, uh, virtual, especially throughout this last year, I've always gotten even one or two things, whether it's a different tweak on a play or, or a different way of saying something, certain terminology, a way to explain something um, that I may not have known before. So um, I, I hope that you can get something out of this as well. A little background uh, about me is I, I played college basketball um, at Stonehill College, which I like to think is God's country out here in Easton, Massachusetts. Um, it's about 20 miles outside of Boston. I was really lucky to stay on at Stonehill, um, which is a division two school and be the assistant coach, one of the assistant coaches after I graduated in 2003, so way back. Um, I was able to work for a couple of years there. And I think especially given that um, Huddle is is hosting this event, going from what used to be the editing machines and the things we would have to do to be able to play film back and get our highlights and be able to make points and, and edits to our team um, is just incredible with where we've come now, where we have Huddle and all these this great technology to really help us out, help our kids out, um, and hopefully make everybody better. Um, so I ended up going back uh, after I coached for a couple of years collegiately to get my master's in school counseling. Um, and was an assistant basketball coach at a high school and then became the girls basketball coach, uh, varsity coach at Braintree High School, about maybe 10 miles outside of Boston. Um, really, you know, big school, division one school out here. Um, had a very fortunate run uh, for those 10 years, had some great kids that I was lucky enough to coach, um, worked with some great people and just really learned a lot. Um, and then after those 10 years, I recently, the past, um, this would be my third season coaching boys at Norwood High School, where I am the school counselor as well. So the, the big reason that I switched had nothing to do with gender. It was more to do with, um, I wanted to be in the same place where I work and coach, felt like I could get closer to the, even closer to the kids, uh, seeing them on a regular basis and kind of being able just to go all in at one school. Um, just because I get that question a lot about why I switched to boys. And that's, that's really it. I wanted a, a challenge. I think anytime you start up a new program, um, you are putting yourself outside of a comfort zone, right? So it, it doesn't matter how established that program is. You are the rookie going in and you're going to be creating something that's hopefully uh, special to you, special to the people in it. Um, so I know I take that very seriously. Um, it's a big responsibility. Uh, but I think it's an incredible opportunity. And I know you would share that. So brings me to my topic today, uh, which is building your program culture from the ground up. And when I created that title, I definitely didn't want it to come across as if I walked into two high schools at Braintree or Norwood where they had nothing. You know, there was no foundation laid. Um, they you know, weren't a good program at all, and I had to build it up from you know, the grassroots. And that is, that's absolutely not the case. What I do mean by it is that each time you take over a program, and I, I think this is the really exciting part of it, is that you get to instill a piece of you 
in, in all the parts, which, which is really exciting. Um, and it's, like I said, it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of responsibility, but that's something that I feel very, um, I put a lot of pride in, in terms of trying to build those programs. So I would say this, this next, you know, maybe 25 minutes is probably less for you college coaches out there. It's a little bit different in terms of obviously like starting up a program uh, collegiately than it is to start up your program um, in high school. So uh, especially you newcomers, I would say, hopefully you get a few things out of this. Um, and even those of you that like me have jumped to different schools and you know, your first few years of getting out of the gate there, maybe some things to think about that you might wanna try um, and you know, hopefully they can work for you as much um, as they have, have worked and have found some success with over the years um, for myself. So with that being said, um, I also know what it feels like to initially get that new coaching job, right? So you put in all this work just to get it. You do the interviews, you ask a million people things, and then all of a sudden you get it. And, um, you know, you, you go from being this like, and I'm going to share my screen here. Um, you, you go from being who in my case always felt like the J right of basketball, right? Like I got this, I'm smooth, I'm cool. I know exactly what to expect. You guys made the best hire ever. This is gonna be amazing. To that very fierce, very quick reality um, that you actually don't know how anything's gonna go. And you're a sweaty mess that um, inside is full of turmoil and questions. And you are just trying to uh, figure out what the next step's gonna be. And that could be a very small step day to day. And so hopefully, um, like I said, this will, this will help put some steps in place. And um, you know, I, I include my email at the end. So if you guys have any questions, uh, you can absolutely reach out to me. So I think one of the most important pieces, and you do this right away, hopefully, um, is choosing a staff. And it seems a lot, it looks a lot simpler than it, it really is in my mind, because to me, this is everything. And this is gonna make or break a season, especially a program as you get into it. You wanna make sure you have uh, representation from whatever your school population or community population looks like, is, experiences, um, where people come from, whether that's gender, race, et cetera. Um, for myself personally, I coach boys. So I wanted to make sure that I surrounded myself with a coaching staff of really high level, high character men that could be great role models. You know, I, I didn't necessarily go looking for another female to be on staff um, because I think that they need to see themselves. Um, I'm in the process right now of hiring another freshman coach. And one of the things I would really like to see is a person of color on staff. I think that's incredibly important for people to see themselves in leadership roles. Um, so that's something that I take very seriously. Personal qualities, um, does our staff balance us out? You know, I, I can be really high energy and get all fired up at times. Do I have a coach that is the cool, calm, collected, can make sure he's offsetting uh, my craziness at times? And I do, I have an incredible assistant coach um, and vice versa. You know, sometimes if I'm the calm, cool and I need a little bit of someone to poke the bear and, and get either me going or the team going, I need to know that that person can balance me out. Um, and I'm fortunate enough to have that. Dynamic, um, does it benefit your team to have somebody employed that's at the school or a community member or somebody local that can get to more practices, whether it's uh, you know, off season, conditioning work, uh, lifting, that type of thing. I think this can also work the other way. You, know, you wanna make sure if you are in a community that and you decide to hire within that community that that person has a good reputation, that there's a lot of trust, um, and that you know you've built that relationship where whatever happens in your program stays in your program. You can also use it as an outlet if you know they are a good conduit to the rest of the community, then it is a great time to be able to kind of sprinkle things into that person so that they do take it out to the community. So. Um, it's just a matter of what, what your school needs and where you're looking to do. But once you have the right staff on at all levels, whether you, you do have that freshman JV um, and varsity like 
my program up, so those sub varsity levels. I think that's a really great way to start, um, and then you can move from there. So right away, um, invest early in your players, right? So we initially, you have a, a, a team meeting, um, and the biggest thing for me, I know when I first went in to meet my team um, at Braintree and at, at Norwood now with the boys, is that they know that I care enough to have done a lot of homework to make sure that they know I know the team, they know I know their past. Um, for instance, when you know I first got this job at Norwood, I had gone in and I watched every film of their games from the years before. I, I did out how many possessions they had, how many times they scored off of you know, one pass shots or how many times we scored off of even just moving the ball three or four times or swinging it you know, east to west. Um, so I could go in with those specific descriptions of what I thought we could do and try to explain that to my team. And immediately you're getting them on board with what your goal is uh, for them and for the team. And, you know, I think another big thing is to find out a few things about each kid outside of basketball. So, uh, you know, as you guys know, everything is on Google now, everything is on social media. I guarantee you most of your, your players are gonna have um, Instagram, Facebook, I mean, maybe not as much Facebook anymore, but definitely Instagram, maybe Twitter. Um, so you can find out some, some little things here and there and be able to actually address them with them um, after that meeting or even during that meeting. Other sports activities, immediately, if you can try to go to as many um, outside activities that a student might be involved in outside of basketball, it'll just give you that next, next level of connection. Um, and I think that is so invaluable. And individual meetings. And I know as coaches, we all have these. Um, and some would say, you know, definitely the in-person stuff, I, I would agree is the, the most beneficial to both of you. But I also think texting and having that group text, you know, you, it's not crossing boundaries as long as you are professional about it. And you can still be funny and engaging in text, but it keeps, it keeps the kids together and knowing year round that you're, you're watching them, you know what they're doing, um, you know, the pros and cons, you're putting things out there to them and you can be a part of their life. Um, and what I've found is that students will text me about important things that are going on, you know, ask me questions, be references for, uh, you know, employment that they might be getting. So other things that just make our line of communication a little bit easier. And um, I've never had to worry about crossing any lines that way. Um, whether you call, although calling seems to be going out of style for a lot of our players, um, shooting them emails. So I'll find out uh, one of my players did something at school, like in a good way. I heard from a teacher to shoot them a real quick email saying, you know, awesome job. That's that's great to hear. But again, they just need to know that you're going all in. So if we build it, they will come. Right. And at, coming from a public high school and which I know a lot of you are coming from. Um, I think more importantly for us, they will stay, right? So if we build it, they will stay and potentially not go to private schools, maybe that local private school, that local prep school, they might actually stay and be a part of, of that uh, town's community. And it's something that us at public schools, um, you know, go up against every year. And obviously it's a family decision and, and we support whatever they do. But for our own uh, selfish needs and school needs, we want to keep all those kids in public schools. So what do we got to do from the beginning? And this is really, really uh, at the highest level of my, my list is our youth program and our recreation department. We want kids that from the, from the age, you know, three, four, five, getting into grade schools, going up through middle schools, like everything they want to do is be a part of your school, you know, we're the Mustangs. So I want every little kid to grow up thinking they're gonna be a Mustang playing for a varsity basketball team at some point. And to do that takes a considerable amount of work. I think it's really worth it. Um, if you, you know, if you have the time and you're able to commit to it, especially year round, um, I think it's worth it. And I think it'll be worth it for your program. So some of the ways we do it with our youth program, and I can say, uh, very definitively that any success any of my teams have had has been because of our youth program um, at Braintree and at Norwood. And I'm sure it, this would go the same for uh, private schools, their local town communities, what they can do to build that, that youth up. Um, so immediately meeting with your youth basketball board, what are the priorities, showing them you're invested, 
again, just you know, going through this blueprint of what you see and you, what you envision in terms of the program becoming, it is so important that they're on board with that um, and financially as well are on board and can help you out with some of your, your goals and, and things you're trying to accomplish. Year-round youth clinics, um, so we run them in the fall, we run them in the spring, um, we run them during, uh, you know, at the end of practices once a week. Um, and we really try to make them free if possible. You know, occasionally we'll do a fundraiser thing, but for the most part, I just want kids to have a ball in their hands. And I really want them to get to know not only myself, but I want them to get to know our other players. And so a lot of my varsity guys, my future varsity guys will come down and, um, and host those clinics with me. And in Braintree, I had a lot of girls that were, you know, going off division one, really just studs in the area. And um, they were celebrities to these kids, you know, and I'm seeing the same thing in, in Nord now with the boys, everybody just wants to be like them. So you got to get them exposed to those kids early. Um, 10 games as VIP guests. So I started this a few years ago uh, when I was still at Braintree. And what we do is for the travel program in our town. So travel youth program, however you, um, you call it where you're from. We have, so say there's like a fourth grade A and B team. We would have, you know, fourth grade A be a VIP guest at one of our games. They sit behind our bench. Um, this year, we're gonna add, giving them a, a tour of our building. We have a nice building, so I want them to see it. Um, and really just give them kind of the ins and outs of school, um, get them some pizza. And they sit behind our bench, cheer us on, um, try to have candy or something for them as well. And then they come in at halftime with us. Um, so they get to hear the halftime talk, unless it's one of those games where um, it's probably best that they don't join me at halftime. Uh, so there's only been a couple of games where I've asked for the kids not to come in and told them they can maybe come in at the end of the game. But normally it kind of keeps me in check as a coach, um, keeps the players in check. So it, it can be a very positive thing. And then it reminds you why you're doing all this too. Um, so that, that's been great. You know, then maybe our next home game, we'll have the fourth grade B team. I think it's important if you do have an A and B team to separate them and allow them to have their own special night. Um, they're, especially those B teams, um, they're so used to being put up against those 18 kids and, and always a step behind. So this gives them their night. Um, so that's, a, that's been a really you know, big success. Um, and then they come in with us at the end of the game as well. Mentorship program, um, we're getting off the ground right now. We had started it during uh, COVID where we are matching up our players with younger kids that are just coming into the area. So we have um, more of a transient population in the past maybe 10 years at Norwood. So what we're trying to do is match up our varsity players with kids coming in so that they are immediately involved, know what's going on, feel like a part of our community. Um, and again, we want kids that not only want to stay and be a part of more basketball, but also really feel like they belong, you know, and, and want to get involved. We have a ton of athletes. Um, I've seen over the years, you know, having not been a coach at the school I work at, I've seen a lot of kids who decided to maybe play something else and not play at all. And I, I think it was a gap in actually knowing that, basketball was such a big deal and it could be really fun and you get to know all these people. So we just wanna make sure that they're aware of that right away. Um, year round youth clinics. Uh, so as I mentioned, and I actually doubled it up by accident, um, we talked about that earlier and the summer camp I think is the number one most important thing that we do all year. Um, in Braintree Norwood, we had a blast over the summer, uh, ran a week, now two weeks of a camp, and you really, really get to know kids there. We have from first grade through ninth grade, um, huge numbers, and by the time they end, I know them by name. I can talk to them when I see them at other schools and in the off season, and especially when they're coming to our games and, and we're inviting them to our practices. So those are some very important things. Um, I think it'll get you guys going right away. Um, another way you can build it and they will come is for your alumni players to be a huge part of your success. So um, I was lucky because I've, I've been a school counselor at the school I'm at now for many years. So even though I didn't coach there, I knew many of the alumni players. And so collecting feedback, positive areas, you know, areas for improvement, 
all about them letting me know what they want to see more or less. Um, this year we had a really cool thing over the summer and it was actually out of the fact that we couldn't afford to enter other summer leagues. So we decided, you know what, we're just going to run our own summer league. So we had an outdoor summer league with uh, three alumni teams and they were two alumni teams. They were loving being back playing uh, three current player teams. So between freshmen, JV and varsity, um, they drafted teams, our captains drafted those teams. And then we had a coaches team, which is hysterical, but, um, and the, you know, everybody was psyched to be there. They were able to get to know each other. They now know who like, you know, our studs are that we have right now. And they would stay after and cheer them on for the, for the next game. And now I know they're going to come to more of our games and they're going to present more of a positive vibe in the community about the basketball, um, about our basketball program. So I think those little things matter and we'll continue to do that and hopefully continue to build on the number of teams um, that we had. Most people do this, the annual alumni game. I, I think there's something really important about that. Uh, just, you know, and there's really no other incentive in this in just that it's awesome and it brings everybody back together. We like to do it on um, Christmas Eve morning before we uh, have a little bit of a, a holiday break. And then mentorships, if you can have your alumni uh, players mentor your current players, uh, whether it's, and not necessarily about basketball, but about, you know, I've had a few kids connect, whether they're in the trades, and I know somebody else that wants to go into that area. So it could be career college focused. Um, it could be someone that's dealing with something that I know one of my former players or former students has dealt with. So we try to match them up, but it's always worth it. Uh, and I think it goes a long way. Our faculty and staff. So immediately every year we reach out with rosters of our players um, asking for input from teachers so they know that they can come to us whenever possible. Um, it's a shared experience and we, we need them to be partners in this process. Um, we send out emails about notable games, try to get as many of our faculty and staff to, to join us. And we have a faculty and staff appreciation game every year. Um, we started this at Norwood um, where each player invites a particular staff member that has impacted their life in a very positive way, um, their favorite. And we don't just have them come to the game. We have them come, we give them pizza, and then we introduce them before the game. So it does become a special thing. Um, and all the staff members that have come in the past, like really love it. They feel like it's the biggest compliment ever. Um, and then we see them at uh, so many of our future games because they wanna continue to be a part of that program. And our student body, right? I, I think, um, you know, it, as much as you're worrying about everything else, you know, how are you going to win? What are you going to run for plays? And all your mind's going in a million different directions. I think this is one of the, the fun parts, like the really fun parts is to get your student body involved um, and create an atmosphere where fans actually want to show up and, and have a good time. Um, so we created a Mustang fan club. Um, so we had t-shirts for certain kids. So we had about you know, 20, 30 kids show up, we would give them a t-shirt and this was like a club activity. So we had it after school, um, met with them. I even went through like, you know, different chants they can say that's all, you know, tasteful, but um, funny and could get everybody going. Um, it's crazy, but you have to kind of teach kids these things these days. Uh, super fan shirts, et cetera. We had, you know, the t-shirt gun, uh, t-shirt slingshot. So it, just little things that, again, uh, make them excited to be a part of it. And we're in the process of hiring a student to uh, be our DJ, because if you don't have music during games, I really don't know how you have a game. Uh, that's my, just my personal thing. So now you've, you've kind of done all the other areas, right? So you've met with the people you need to meet with, and, and I would maybe add in your boosters club um, and your strength and conditioning people, and those are some ancillary groups as well that play a major role, um, but I won't get into that as much. So now you're, you're creating a culture for your team. So you're sitting there and you're thinking, okay, you know, before again, you get into the X's and O's piece, I wanna make sure that I, I love the product that we're putting out as people and, and character first. And what are we representing when we walk on the court? And so this is really important to me. Um, focus on values and the roles that your players have and, and 
present with. So the roles that they're gonna take on. Um, so what is culture, right? We throw culture around the word all the time. So break down all that jargon for them. And there's a million ways of doing that. Um, I do it in a lot of different ways. Um, but what, what do you mean by culture? Everybody says, oh, that makes a great culture. What is it to you guys? You know, And that's something you have to figure out as a coach. What does it mean to you? And how are you gonna get that across to your team? Um, same thing, all the little things that we say, toughness, attitude, leadership, like, yep, those go in and out. And what does it mean? You know, is it, is it worth showing the Jay Billis article on toughness? Because that is what toughness is. You know, it's not necessarily being chippy and, and pushing someone down and fighting someone for a rebound all the time. It's getting through a screen and um, not fake hustling, you know, or you're putting yourself behind a play. So um, Jay Billis's article, if you haven't read it, um, we go through that every year with our team. That's a, an important one. So that's toughness to us. And that's how we break that down. And we go through the line with attitude, leadership, et cetera. Not all at once, but um, in, in different ways. Second thing here, we give a quiz based on different scenarios. So I have um, something that is, they laugh at, but it's actually, I want to know what, what they're going to put for answers. And it'll say like, if you, if you just won a game, um, and but you only scored two points and didn't have as good of a game, should you be happy? Um, and they have to answer that. If you lost a game, but you scored 30 points, should you be really excited after the game about that? And, and you have to write out some of these scenarios for them. What do you do if a uh, coach, if a ref makes a bad call? What do you do if, you know, should a parent be yelling out on the sidelines, um, you know, and, and saying things to you? So we really break all of that down. Um, and then you can ask some fun questions, you know, if, what would you rather do have, take a big charge to win a game, uh, block someone to win a game, shoot a big three, and it, it t tells you a lot about a player. And then we actually do skits that act out the situations. And I will say when I switched over to boys, I didn't do this part um, and I'm bringing it back this year. And I think I overthought it and thought like, ah, it's just not that, they won't think it's that funny or cool or whatever. So. It was like, you know, they're, they're different. I did it with the girls all these years because um, they got into it, but it, we would literally act out, you know, if somebody makes a bad call for a ref, like, how do you, how do you respond? And it's amazing when you put them in those situations and they can make it a funny thing, but they realize how they should be handling it. Um, and I'm bringing that back this year for the boys as well. So I'd strongly recommend that. So I give out, I make groups of four, you know, three or four, and this is the whole program of kids. Um, and they have to one, you know, I'll give a index card that says your mom is screaming, shoot the ball. And you know that your coach has told you that pass, you know, that next pass is the better option. You know, what do you do and how do you act it out? Um, what do you do on the bench when somebody comes out of the, the game? You know, do you stand up? Are you in it? Um, what was your body language like? So we do all of that stuff. Another thing. Um, big on is highlighting the role of our bench when we're in film sessions. So if I'm reviewing film with them and I, or I have any highlight film of any kind, I take clips of our bench going crazy so that they get a laugh out of it. They're all excited. And to be honest, I know they never admit this, but they absolutely do hold themselves to that level going forward. Like they want to be in that highlight film um, and be able to like be going crazy. And I think it really gets us going. Um, for instance, like, so I'm a bit, I'm big into psychology, right? So everything that I'm thinking during games probably, unfortunately, is about like, how can we be the team with psychology, right? Like, and I'll overthink a lot of stuff. But one of the things we do is at the beginning of the game, we all stand. So while the tip is going on, all our guys are standing, we don't sit down right away, which I know we're not supposed to do. Um, but what we wait for is the ref will ultimately wait, you know, usually a minute before he or she realizes we're still standing on the sidelines. Um, they'll stop the game, they'll come over and they're in essence telling my team to be less energetic. So uh, pretty cool when the whole gym knows that, that our team is being too energetic and they have to actually stop the game. And I think the other team sees that and I feel like that's when we got them, you know, that's when we've won. Um, so just kind of, you know, those psychological advantages. And then volunteer opportunities, you know, how are, how are we as coaches putting ourselves out there to make sure we're showing that we're taking advantage of all those like 
great opportunities to help others um, and putting our kids in those positions where they're able to do the same. Uh, and I, I think there's something to be said for that. Um, so that is, uh, I talked a lot, I apologize, um, but um, I, I get so excited about the newness of a program and I think it's like a just really fun time, even if, you know, I'm going into my third year with this new program at Norwood Coaching Boys, and I still feel like I'm day one, you know, trying to figure it out and what can we do differently and how can we make our program better? And so all these little things that I now do took, you know, years of kind of being like, geez, I wish I did that earlier. I wish I had added that. And so hopefully um, you can get, you know, even if it's one or two things that you might think about um, implementing for your own teams. It has been so fun joining you guys today. Um, again, this is my email here, uh, kristamcdonald10 at gmail.com. If you have any questions, just want to reach out. I'd love to learn from you guys. So if you have any, uh, you know, whether it's podcasts or groups that you hold of coaching circles, um, I'd love to be on that invite list. Thank you so, so much. Uh, have a great year and good luck with your teams.